Welcome again to another video session of Community Groups at The Pursuit. Each week we provide a new video lesson that correlates with the message from Sunday. And don't worry if you missed Sunday services. You can still participate in this group session just by watching this video. But if you'd like to watch the message that goes with it, you can find a link to that service in the description below. Now, let's start with a question. And the question is this. Think about what is your favorite possession that you own? Maybe for some of you it could be your house. Perhaps it's a car. Maybe you have that favorite piece of furniture that you just love planning yourself into after a long day at work. Maybe there's a family heirloom that you've inherited. It could be a piece of memorabilia that you just had your eye on for the longest time and then you finally got it. Whatever it is, your ownership of it may not quite be what you think it is. Let me go to Psalm 89 verse 11 to help explain where it says this, speaking of God, it says, the heavens are yours, the earth also is yours, the world and all that is in it, you have founded them. Beyond this, we can see from God's word in 1 Corinthians 10, Revelation 4, which we see things that God owns everything. And so if God owns everything, how can I or how can you own anything? Well, God has a plan for that. Think of it as a business plan. You see, one could say that God established a management company just as owners of property will often have companies that are designed to manage the well-being of their property for them, God has a management company too. It's called mankind. In Genesis 1, just after God created mankind, this is what we're told. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. And fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. You see, it can be said that God created mankind to manage what he owns. He owns it all. To which some of you may be questioning his business model and most assuredly you're questioning the corporate structure within it. But let me quickly remind you that God once had another property management company that relied upon angels to manage God's creation. But as you know, one of the angels, well, they decided to go rogue. In Isaiah 14, it explains how Lucifer, the shining day star, rebelled against God and tried to establish his own ownership on God's premises and tried to create a joint venture with other angels. This led to a cosmic kingdom rebellion, which Jesus said in Luke 10 that he saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Jesus said, I was there from the beginning. He said, I saw what happens when one of the created ones tries to take ownership of that which isn't theirs. So, if we don't own any of it, what then are you asking is our purpose? Well, Pastor Tom's message, he explained a few reasons why God created us, including, first of all, for a relationship with God. God's heart is for us to each have a personal relationship with him. Pastor Tom also shared another purpose we have. And that's for the enjoyment of God and creation. See, God's heart is not for us to just be burdened and not have any fun or enjoy anything. He, he wants us to enjoy what he created for us in part to recognize his goodness, and his sovereignty overall. But that's not all that we're created for. We're also created for stewardship. In Psalm 8, it says, speaking of mankind, you have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. That, my friends, it's stewardship. If you're not familiar with that term, don't worry. You just think of it as wise management of what God has created. In God's kingdom stewardship, this management crew of mankind, male and female, We've been tasked with protecting and expanding the assets of the owner, the owner God. God wants us to protect and expand his kingdom. But we can only do that properly if we understand that we don't own that which he has only given us to manage. Because whenever the manager is doing something opposite to what the owner has prescribed, there's going to be conflict. Because the owner is insisting that you work for me, not I work for you. The truth is, you're not an owner. I'm not an owner. But we are a part of a management team tasked to take care of God's creation. He is the creator. He is the author. He's the owner. He's the sovereign one with all authority. We often want to rewrite the rules. We want to tell God how he's wrong. We want to be his editors and erase out the things we don't like. But that's not the way it works. One of the worst things that a manager can do is to put his rebellious intellect on God's property. See, I grew up on a farm. I was a farm boy, and like a farm boy, I worked alongside my dad and my grandpa on the family farm. And I recall plenty of times in which the two of them, who were the owners of the farm, they prescribe a plan of work for us. And I often thought, well, I knew of ways that were better. Really, honestly, there were just ways that meant less work for me. So I'd speak up and I'd say, well, I think, or, or how about we did this? And 
to which I'd just be cut off and my ideas rejected because, listen, they weren't paying me to think, especially when my thoughts were competing with theirs. You see, God wants to, through relationship with you, reveal to you His knowledge so that we can manage according to His ways and His purpose. Because God has given you managerial responsibilities. You can see this in Genesis 2, verse 15, when God tells Adam to keep and to work the land. Some translations will use the word cultivate. That means to unleash all of what it can do, to maximize its potential. God doesn't want you to do what you think is best. He knows his creation and its potential. He wants you to do it his way so that he can release that potential through you. Now, when God did this, gave mankind the ability to unpack and to flourish his creation, given him all the natural resources needed to do it all. But God also gave mankind the ability to mess it up. Management groups, they can quit. They can resign. They can fail. God has given us the freedom to choose, and we can mess up all what he created. And as a manager or steward of God's kingdom, you are free to now mess up your life, your family, your world. But God wants you and me to live under him. He wants us to follow his ways, to fully unlock all its potential. But that potential only exists through intimacy with God. You must pursue an intimate relationship with him because that will give you the information needed so that he can produce something that was not there when we first started. We may have good motives, but we often make bad choices because it's not coming from our steward relationship with him. Kingdom stewardship is our earthly responsibility. Psalm 115 verse 16 says, The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of mankind of man. He's expecting us to do on earth what comes from him because he has put earth under our management. So what then, you ask, is the benefit of us to us? Go back to verse 28 in Genesis 1. Here we see God's blessing. If you want the full expression of God working in your life, give up ownership to him. Rather, seek to manage it according to his word and your relationship with him. That's where the blessings will be found. So the question then becomes, are you willing to give up ownership to God and just become a manager who is willing to find out what God, who is the owner, wants in every sphere of influence in your life, giving him permission to use all that he has given you? Because if you can understand that you are a manager, not an owner, and you give it up, you have positioned yourself to have the God of the Bible bless you richly. So how bad do you want God's blessings? So I ask that you and your group, please take time to discuss your own thoughts from this topic as well as any scripture that was mentioned. And don't forget, you can find the discussion guide that goes along with this video linked in the description below. As always, please make sure that you take time to close out your time together as a group, sharing your prayer requests with the others so that they can pray with you now as well as throughout the week to come.